Hey folks, I'm Trek. Let's learn calculus. Hey folks, Trek here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do the two most important trigonometric limits. There are other more obscure ones, but these are the ones you'll use pretty regularly throughout the rest of calculus, so we're going to go over them. All right, let's uh, get started. So these are the two. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, which you can't directly evaluate because obviously you have a hole there if you plug in x. And exactly the same over here, the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x. Both of these have holes, you can't evaluate them directly, but we're going to show you how we get the limits of them. Alright, so... Alright, so we're going to start with sine of x over x. Okay, here I have a circle, as you can see. And we're going to use this to prove it. I've got three regions here. First we got this outer region over here. This, the, the whole like sector here. I'm going to call this region A. And then we've got this uh, triangle here, this blue, green, black triangle. I'm going to call this region B. And then lastly we've got this blue, orange, black sector here. I'm going to call this region C. As you can see, A is always greater than B is always greater than C. No matter how we change the shape, change the size of this circle, that's always going to be true. So, the area of A is greater than or equal to the area of B is greater than or equal to the area of C. This is something that should be obvious from the geometry of this shape here. So, what is the area of these three different regions? Well, our big region, area A, its area is equal to one half times one squared times our angle, which we're going to use the variable x in this case. And that's the uh, formula for the area of a sector. Our area b, let me just write this down real quick. It, it's the area of a triangle, so it is one half times the height, which is sine x times the uh, base, which is cosine of x. And then lastly, our area C, which it has an area of a sector again, which is one half times the radius. That's, in this case, the radius is cosine of x. So cosine, sorry, the, the, the formula is one half times the radius squared times the angle. So cosine is our, the cosine, which is this, this length right here, is our radius and our angle is x, so times x. All right, I'm going to uh, clear, I'm gonna move stuff around so you can see it better. So, let's write this again. We have <coughs> one half cosine squared x times x is less than or equal to, uh, one half cosine of x times sine of x is less than or equal to one half one squared times x. All right, and then we're going to multiply all of these things by this factor here: two over x cosine x. And this is going to clean stuff up so that it, we can evaluate it. So. This times 2 over x cosine x is cosine of x is less than or equal to. Over here, we uh, clear out the 1 half, we get rid of the cosine, and we end up with sine of x over x. And then over here, we lose the 1 half, we end up with, we lose the x's, and we end up with 1 over cosine of x. All right. So hopefully you've guessed it. We're about to use the squeeze theorem for the first time. We're going to show you, this is this is like example of how to use squeeze theorem to prove something that we need to know. So we have three functions. We've proven that they are, we've shown that they are, you know, the, our smallest one is smaller than our middle one and our biggest one is always bigger than our middle one. 
and this is the right conditions for using the squeeze theorem. And we need to know the limits of this function and this function, which we do. If we take the limit of all three, cosine of x, as x approaches zero, is less than or equal to the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is less than or equal to the limit of one over cosine of x as x approaches zero. We can evaluate the first and last ones, but we don't know the middle one because that's kind of the point. Well, this one's easy. We could just plug in zero and cosine of zero is one. I'm just gonna put marks here. And over here, the uh, if we plug, we can also just plug in zero here. One over cosine of zero is again one. And now we can just use the squeeze theorem. We just say since it has to be between one and one, and there's only one option at that point since the only value between one and one is one, that we can now say the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x is equal to one. And there's the proof for that particular limit. All right, good, now let's uh, try the other one. The other one we're actually gonna use the, the limit we just found to prove. So we wanna know, the limit of one minus cosine of x over x as x approaches zero. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply by one plus cosine of x over one plus cosine of x. And that'll give us the limit as x approaches zero of one minus cosine squared of x, that's what you get when you multiply these two top terms together, over x times one plus cosine of x. Now, if you know your trig identities, the top should be familiar to you. It is the trig identity for sine squared of x. So now we can change this to limit x approaches zero of sine squared of x over x one plus cosine of x. And you should notice an instantly a relationship here, which we can split it out. Limit of x goes to zero of sine x over x times the limit. And again, you can uh, split limits out like this. It's totally fine. It's, uh, it's basically a linear operator. Uh, what's left? Sine x over one plus cosine x. Okay. One last step. We we can successfully um, evaluate all of our limits now. Since we know this one is one, this one over here, all we have to do is plug in zero since it's now safe. Sine of zero is zero and one plus cosine of zero is two. So zero over two. One times zero over two is zero. And that's our answer. <clears throat> all right. Hey y'all, I want to thank you all for watching my videos. If you are enjoying them, please like and subscribe. I would love to keep creating them and your support really means a lot. Uh, today's shout outs go to Practical Engineering, who is this uh, sort of up and coming great visualizer of engineering experiments. He basically puts together little projects, talks about the physics and the science behind them and shows you how they work. And his content is amazing. Uh, next up, kind of random, I have Sergeant Mark IV who mods the original Doom, as in, you know, 1990, father of all shooter games, and he add, fully features them and bring, he fully features Doom and brings it up to snuff with modern games and gives it this amazing and glorious testosterone-filled new, you know, new life to it. So check that out if you want to see his content. He's still active in modding it today and continuing to add the features. Thank you.